This is the fourth section of chapter one on complex numbers in the core one book. And we're going to be looking at the roots of quadratic equations. So as we've done previously, what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at um, the roots of quadratics with uh, real numbers. So we know that we can either have either uh, one real root. It's basically the same root repeated. Um, or we can have two real roots, so there'll be two different numbers, or we can have no real roots. Now, this thing with no real roots, we'll now be able to do using our complex numbers, and there will be complex roots. So actually, every quadratic has roots. Um, Sometimes those roots are complex roots, and if you don't stand it, do further maths, then you'll never know how to find those other roots which you can't do in your normal, even A level maths lessons. Um, so, yeah, we'll be focusing on the complex roots at the moment in a minute. But what I want to have a look at is okay, let's say I knew the, the roots of a quadratic, of a normal quadratic, let's say the roots were five and negative three. The question I want to ask, is it possible to work out what the quadratic was just from the roots? And the answer is yes. And what we do, we basically work backwards from what we would have done to solve a quadratic to find the roots. So where did those numbers come from? Well, they came from the brackets. So always like this. So you could think of it as x minus the first root and x minus the second root, yeah, so x minus root 1 and x minus root 2. It just means that if the root is negative, you end up putting plus. So x minus 5, x plus 3, yeah, and then what we do is expand the brackets. So we'd have x squared plus 3x minus 5x minus 15. So the quadratic that generated those roots would have been x squared minus 2x minus 15. Yeah, and we got that from the roots. Yeah, by working backwards, we can do the same type of thing with complex roots. If we know what the roots are, we can um, find out what the quadratic equation was that generated those roots. So the first thing, um, we're going to call the roots of a quadrat of or roots of quadratic. We want some general letters, so we'll call them alpha and beta. So two Greek letters we'll use to stand for the roots of uh, a quadratic, whether they're real or complex. But what we find is that um, these roots of quadratic, the complex complex roots of quadratics come in pairs okay so these roots come in a complex pair so you'll never get one complex root you'll always get two and this complex pair uh, these are conjugates of each other or each other yeah so basically if one root is alpha then the other root beta is the conjugate of alpha so if we know one root we can easily find the other and then like before with the real roots what we can do is we can remember we're going to be using z because we're talking about complex numbers we could write those roots as um, z minus the first root z minus the second root yeah um, i suppose over here i should have put equal zero shouldn't i really yeah well i'll just leave it floating around like that from the roots um yeah and if we look at what we did with the uh the real ones what did we do well we multiplied out the brackets 
So if I were to multiply the brackets here, I would get z squared um, minus uh, z beta minus z alpha plus alpha beta. And then what we can do is the bit in the middle, we can factorize out z. So we could put uh, negative alpha plus beta z, just by factorizing it, plus alpha beta. Now, we've done some stuff that's going to help us. Remember we said here, this is going to be basically alpha plus its conjugate, beta is its conjugate. And what did we say that was equal to? 2a. Yeah, so alpha is going to be a plus bi, beta is going to be alpha minus bi. So yeah, we did that before we came up with the result. And here, what did we say when we multiply a number by its conjugate? Well, then it's the sum of the square. So a squared plus b squared. So that may give us some quick ways so here we're just doing alpha times its conjugate we may have some quick ways of working these values out to get our quadratic and we'll write our quadratic in terms of z rather than in terms of x given that alpha is one of the roots of a quadratic equation with real coefficients state the other root well the other root is going to be Beta is equal to the conjugate of alpha, and that's going to be 7 minus 2i. Part B, find a quadratic equation. Okay, so to do that, we'll write z minus the first root, or whichever root, z plus 2i. Then we'll have z minus the other root, which is 7 minus 2i. So it's just a little bit more complicated because if they were real roots, um, this bit here and this bit here would be a single number, but it's a complex number. So we'll multiply this out and then we'll look for the uh, quick ways of finding the solution. So if I multiply, I'll get z squared. Um, then I'm going to have minus z times 7 minus 2i and then minus z times 7 plus 2i and then I'll have plus and then I'm going to have 7 plus 2i and 7 minus 2i. The bit in the middle I can uh, factorize so I've got z and then I'll have um, negative z and then I'll have 7 minus 2i um, plus 7 plus 2i I don't need to factorize I could just like multiply it all out and then this here now rather than go straight to the rule I'm just going to multiply it out because in the last bit of the question, we're going to sort of prove the result. So z squared, now negative z, now in the brackets, I've got seven plus seven, which is 14, and then two i minus two i. So I basically end up with 14 here. And the bit at the end, I will multiply the brackets, even though I know it's the sum of two squares. And then just to prove to you that it works. So I'll have 49, uh, minus 14i plus 14i minus two, uh, 4i squared, 4i squared, like that. Um, so we've got z squared minus 14z, and then the bit here at the end, well, the uh, 14s are going to cancel out, so that gives me, and then um, this bit here, negative 4i, 
four i squared. I squared is negative one, so that becomes plus four. So forty-nine plus four, which is uh, fifty-three. So I'll just be left with plus fifty-three equals zero. So I suppose I should have all of these equal to uh, zero. Let's do that. Or people start complaining in the comments okay so that's the quadratic there now we know there could have been an easier way to do it because part c says find the values of a plus b and a uh, times b and interpret the results well, we've sort of done this before a plus b okay is equal to basically 2a and that's the coefficient of the z term coefficient of z term yeah and a times b well that's the sum of two squares that's the a squared plus b squared and that is the uh the number term so what we could have done if we wanted to do this quickly and you are allowed to do it this way is to say right okay this is what i'm trying to find the well i know one root and i know the other root yet yeah, so the really quick way is to say right these are the roots seven minus two i seven plus two i um the quadratic is going to be of this form z squared uh minus uh, alpha plus beta z so the sum of the conjugates plus the what we get when we multiply the conjugates now I know that when I add the conjugates I'm just going to get 2a okay and 2a 2 times the real part is 14 so I could write z squared minus 14z and the number at the end is what we get when we um, multiply the conjugates and that's when you get the sum of two squares so you get 49 7 squared plus 2 squared 4 and you get 53 so yeah and that's much quicker so you can use that result to find the quadratic really quickly right you should now be able to do exercise 1e on pages 9 to 10 of the textbook